Of course, the title of the movie is Transformers, and I was going to talk a little bit about how we did the transformations for the show. We expected to do 10 to 15 transformations based on the original storyboards that we got. We ended up doing 48 for the show, and um, they, that included things like uh, battle masks, which you see here, uh, weapons, which there were quite a few of, and these were actually some of the most difficult because Ironhide has fairly thin arms, but then he's got these enormous guns that come out of them. So with that kind of volume change, you really had to figure out something interesting to make it work where it didn't just seem like everything was scaling out of nowhere. So as we approached our first transformation, which was this one in SA30, we again went out and collected reference. And we always we started from a lot of anime, horror movies, um, all over the place. And if you look at the way that the helicopter opens in the anime, um, you know you can see that referenced in uh, Blackout's transformation. And I apologize if I if I call him Incinerator. We had different names for them while we were working on them. Then uh, Hasbro relabeled them. So we'd get the transformation together, uh, we would cut up the high-risk geometry and add thickness to it. Um, the, the helicopter, we had a practical one that we had to match exactly. The robot, of course, we had a, a design for that we modeled. And um, th this part here, you can see those are all the comp elements that got layered over. And an important thing to note about this is that Michael doesn't really like to shoot clean plates. And when you want to integrate CG into a live-action plate, and there's no blue screen and there's no clean plate, it's very difficult. And it takes a lot of work by our really talented Roto paint team to go in and paint out every single soldier that was in front of him. But additionally, you can see all the flares, smoke, lighting um, that we added in afterwards in order to integrate our CG into the scene. And at the end of the day, um, it ends up looking much better because of all those elements. So here's another transformation. And a lot of the transformations were real back and forth collaborations between our animation team and our, what we call our creature TDs. Um, so here's a first take uh, that animation put together and uh, for Michael just to get a feel for if he liked how it was working. Then it got passed over to a creature TD and here you can see the transformation from a camera that's not in view. Um, and you can see they look quite different when you're not seeing from the camera's point of view. Here's all the comp elements that were layered over top of it. Um, the flashing lights, the, the glints and the flares, those were all very important in terms of making the car look totally realistic. And here's the final shot. And this plate actually had a police car in it that got completely painted out and replaced with our LCG version. And um, here you can see uh, the results of Starscream attacking Ironhide and Ratchet. We had one creature TD in particular who I thought maybe had something against robots because I gave her a shot of Megatron being attacked uh, by the missiles at the end of the film and she came back with this in which uh, he's basically emptying his guts out all over the street. I said, uh, Carrie, I, that might be just a little too much. So we toned it back for the final shot. Um, but the thing to note there is it's not just the explosion off of him. Like, his foot steps into a hole, and she simmed all the pieces getting pushed out of the way, along with, you know, the lamp pole getting knocked over. So it really was about running a lot of simulations in the environment in order to make sure that these robots felt integrated. Here's another example where uh, we, this was basically an all CG shot except for the plate, and um, we had to do a lot of destruction work that was then supplemented by you know fire and smoke elements that the TDs generated. And here's the shot as it appeared in the film. This shot actually got done in like the last three weeks of the show, so it was quite a pressure cooker in terms of getting it finished. So we had to do, uh, you know, Michael is famous for car chases, and this one had a huge one in it. Um, that meant transformations at 60 miles an hour, and that meant road interaction. And so what you see here, all the smoke and debris and dust elements that we generated in order for this shot to work. Another challenge that's usually not really thought about was that he shot these plates with all the vehicles in them. And of course, to put our CG ones in, we had to remove the real ones. So we had an incredible environments team that built us these all CG backgrounds. They they used real photography from the plate and then from stuff they shot right outside uh, the office, constructed these 3D environments and then were able to deliver plates with zero cars in them so that we could put our CG versions in. Um, most of the time it was easier for us to use all CG versions than it was to transition from real to CG. So. Um, clean plates were essential, and uh, Michael would have us show them side by side, so we had to get to the point where he couldn't tell the difference between the real and the CG one. This is one of my favorite shots in the film, when Bone Crusher tackles Optimus, and um, 
This was also animated by Sean Kelly. Once he was finished, uh, we ran smoke simulations for uh, Bone Crusher's movements after that, and then supplemented it with, again, fire, sparks. Um, the sparks were, were really key in order to sell the character, but you ha we had to make sure that they didn't get too big, otherwise they'd blow the scale on the robots. And here's the final shot in the film. It was all composited together. And an important thing again here is that that bus in the background really blew up. Like we didn't have to do that in, after the fact. And that's what helped make it look so real. Michael shoots very uh, complicated plates with lots of stuff in them. The plate you see on the left was what we got um, back from set. And the one on the right is our final shot. And you can see that normally when you would approach a shot like this, you would say, no, no smoke, no dirt, no nothing. We'll put it in later. But I really think that actually hurts, hurts the look of the final thing. When we started with something real and we had all the smoke there, we just needed to create our own smoke to match uh, Bumblebee into it. And I, I really think that helped the integration and, and part of why they look like they belong in that environment. We did a lot of work with virtual environments on the show, and to do that, we take a nodal camera and we shoot 360 degrees high-res stills, a lot like you know QuickTime VRs you might see on the web, except each one of those images is 4K. We then build really simple geometry and then project those images onto that geometry, and that allows us to move our camera around inside that environment. Now, you know, people probably think that we either get it on set or we do it in CG, and it's not the case at all. We still do a lot of practical effects work, and this is the Kalanika building that we did for Transformers, and this was actually, I was there for the shoot on this. It was really loud when they rammed that uh, green Megatron plane through the middle of it, um, but it was, it was pretty cool to see. This is really neat. Uh, it's a camera from inside. You can see how much detail they put in, in terms of building little tiny office tables, um, you know, waste paper baskets, and everything. Everything. And this was done by Kerner Optical, which is a company just north of San Francisco. But the shot that happens right after these practical shoots um, had, had nothing in it. So we actually had to go in and make a CG version of all that office debris. And what you can see over there on the left is a little toolkit that we had. And it's basically full of fire escapes, rocks, um, pretty much anything you might find in a city. And we could just throw it into a shot and sim it. So here you can see the sequence all put together. Again, that's an entirely virtual environment. Megatron smashing through there. And then at the end, um, we had to transition to CG debris for their roll down the street. Michael was big on these fire escapes coming down, so this was actually a pretty fun sim to do. These are just a bunch of rigid objects all spring together um, with spring pins, and then um, we just key the activeness as soon as the uh, robots got close to them. And here you can see it from the camera's point of view as Optimus rips down the side of the building. When we're photographing those in, um, environment spheres, we hang these cranes off the side of the building. Um, here's an example of how we use that. Again, we built really low-res geometry um, that we then projected those images onto. And once we did that, we could move the camera with quite a bit of freedom within that environment. So then on top of that, we, we built uh, the CG buildings on the sides. Then animation came in and did Optimus jumping back and forth. Then we ran simulation after simulation to do breaking stone, breaking glass, window frames. There's kitchen sink in there. There's all, all kinds of people just grab stuff from that they had in their apartments and threw it, you know, threw it into these shots and then this is the final shot all composited together. So again some of the other unsung heroes of the work we do is the environments group. Uh, here you can see the plate that we got with uh, Megatron. It just had his legs from the waist down and then we went and built the whole upper half of the environment along with uh, his upper torso. And um, we have to layer in again a lot of smoke, steam and um, different elements into it in order to get the final composite that you see. Now, those legs were in there, and um, in later shots we actually wanted them removed, but it was going to be too expensive to remove them, so in many of the shots we had to paint out those legs um, because they were in the way of when once Megatron starts moving. Here's another example of where you're sort of creating something from nothing. This is a backdrop shot in LA um, with Shia running down the street. Again, we take that, we build that virtual environment of all the city background, and then add in the hero robots along with um, some some uh, tracer fire between them and smoke and effects. Simulate some impact when he hits the ground. Michael makes high energy films. He makes action films. So we tried to always, you know, pretty much stuff them as full as we could with really interesting things. And that's why you see that tire fall right next to Shia. Michael was very insistent that a tire had to nearly hit him on the head.